Welcome back, you beautiful people. We're out here in Scotland in Nevis Range, Fort William, and we've got a question to answer. Ooh. What is the best trail to master to become a better mountain biker? Is it a blue or is it a red? At closer inspection, it's not so simple. No, you're absolutely right. Now, red runs are generally slightly more advanced trails than blues because, well, a number of things really, Blake. Things like the surface, the gradient, the exposure, and the features that are on the trail can all separate them from a blue and make it a little bit trickier. Blues are generally, well, they're great for those uh, intermediates, those learners, but, you know, why is that? Well, do you know what? Question, another question is, Ooh. a red run here could be totally different to a red run somewhere else. Mm. It could be a little easier, a little harder, okay. or classed as a black over there. Likewise, with a blue. So before we go any further, let me just say that this video is not a review of your local red versus your local blue. You should always do your homework on what the trail you plan to ride consists of. Best way of doing this is tapping into local knowledge. Ask guides at the trail center, refer to maps, and also search for POV runs of the trail in question on YouTube. The last one can be invaluable. Having done a few POV virtual rides, you'll have a much better understanding on what to expect. I would say that it's a good idea to expect the actual features on the trail you watch on the YouTube videos to be much bigger, steeper, rockier, and rootier than you actually see in the video. <laughs> All those disclaimers out the window, let's look at a few different scenarios why a blue trail can make you a better rider than a red trail. I'm riding the Blue Adder out here in Nevis Range in Scotland. Come with me and I'll explain why riding the blue can make a better rider. Here's a scenario, line choice. On a blue trail, it's mainly the riding line. There's a bespoke line on the trail, and you just basically follow it. But, like every blue out there, they're all different. This is quite rough. If I was to bring my wife down here, she'd be like, woo wee, Blake, this is pretty rough for a blue. And I'd be like, no, it's fine. But we're gonna talk about line choice here. There's a few lines. You can take the inside line, which is a little bit smoother. You got the outside line, we got all these rocks here. I would say, inside line, keep it up high so you can get that apex of that next turn. The simple way to take on my point is the crucial nature of confidence in your ability. Now, when you have confidence, it's easier to put that ability to practice when you're out riding on the trail. Confidence comes with riding harder and harder trails. Potentially slower, occasional big mistake in there, otherwise known as a bigger crash. Whereas a blue trail, it's long, it's flowy, it's fast. You got better line choice. Confidence can build slower. And the time you have riding a blue trail, you can build on your riding abilities, your jumping skills, and all of that under your own steam, instead of chucking yourself in a horrible red trail. For confidence, it's all about riding harder and harder trails. But potential can be a lot slower. Also, bigger learning mistakes, otherwise known as crashes, Whereas a blue trail, that's a fun roller coaster, fun packed, bang for your buck, a lot more. You can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can hit turns, you can work on all of your riding skills and your ability to boost that confidence more so on a blue than on a red. And also, repetition. You can go back up to the top, and keep nailing that same line over and over again, or jump, or turn, or rough bit. So I'm going to just do loads of runs on the blue. Very whizzy. A day of blues is a real bang for your buck when it comes to pace. Simply because of the trail you're riding is smooth, it's wide. The sheer nature of a flowing blue will just increase your pace on multiple levels. Boredom will be damned because the trail isn't asking too much of you, but your growing confidence is certainly starting to ask more for your terms of lap times. Okay, look at this. On a blue trail, there's nothing that's gonna jump out at you, like a gap jump that you need to clear. But your skill's improving, your confidence is building, you feel like you wanna get some air. Now on a blue trail, it's 
pretty easy. It's quite progressive, especially when you get a tabletop where you can just get a little bit of air and can gradually make it bigger and bigger until you clear that tabletop. Now, when it comes to gap jumps, you know, you gotta look out for these. You got two rollers here. Your confidence built, you can get some air. You know you can get some speed. You can use this as a gap jump. And also, the consequences are not that great if you were to case it. So, uh, let's, uh, let's clear this little gap. Let's double it up, roller to roller. That. Now when it comes to experimenting with gap jumps on a blue, like I said, it's a lot more forgiving. Whereas a red, it, the consequences could be a lot higher. So blue, you could do it in your own time. And if you were to case, it's not the end of the day. Right, repetition. Here's a tip to help build that pace up throughout the day. You want to start off really slow. Do a few sighting laps of that blue trail. Get familiarized with what's on that trail and slowly, slowly build up that speed. You'll find that you'll be, a, you'll be starting to get a little bit bored. I feel like you want to push on a lot more because you're excited. You just want to knock it down a peg or two, slow down, like I said, a sighting lap, and you'll see throughout the day, as the day gets older, the faster you'll feel like you'll be getting. By the end of the day, you'll, you'll be going triple the speed than you would right at the beginning, even though I said go slower. But you'll see that entering a corner, you'll feel a lot quicker. That roller, you might be seeing you can get a lot more speed out of that pump. The straights you'll be tucking. You'll be going into a lot of places where you think, hell, I'm going really fast, but I feel confident because you slowly progressed up to that pace on that blue trail. That's why a blue trail is good for going a lot faster and building your confidence. Right, let's crack on down here because uh, there's a few lines. All right, line choice, yes. Brings me on to this section. Now, on a blue trail, it's normally just the riding line. Like I've said at the top where it's a bit rough. But here, I can see three lines. I can see this line, the middle line, and the right line. Now, the right line is a bit more for the uh, more confident rider, more experienced, if you're riding a blue for the first time. Whereas this one is the one that everyone would choose. But you can see there's a left-hander, and it's quite sharp. If you take the inside one, the left-hand rider's line, you're gonna square off that turn. The middle line, it's a little bit rough on the exit, but it definitely gives you a nicer route into that left-hand turn. Now, <laughs> if your confidence is high, you know, and you've built up to this point, because you've done a few sighting laps, you can start to look at this. This is a bank turn. It's like a, like a wall ride sort of thing. But then there's a little step here off this route. So when it comes to this section, you just want to get that weight over the back. But again, it all comes with confidence. But like I said, there's only one line on a blue, and that's the riding line. But when you get to sections like this, you can actually stop, look at it, and go, hell, I can conquer the middle one, or I can conquer the right one, or I'm just gonna stick to the left one. Okay, I've put down a good case for the blue trail. What about the jaw-dropping red trail that all those advanced mountain bikers take on? So the first thing a red trail is gonna offer you, or show you at least, is a wilder variety of trail. And this is something you're gonna to have to learn to embrace. The obstacles that can be on this track, well, they're gonna be a little bit more varied. So sort of embracing that and taking your time to have a little look is definitely gonna be really important. Reds can seem quite overwhelming. So the key here is to start with a sighting lap. This isn't riding slightly within your best pace. This is riding with the plan to stop at difficult sections and really consider your plans on how to approach each obstacle or section. The red should be seen as a big learning curve. So start with that thought at the top of your agenda.
This is a learning curve that can be steep though, so don't rush to conquer it. There's an awful lot to learn on the red trail. So just try and take your time and really embrace those sort of challenges and learning aspect of it. So we're just checking out a bit of trail and actually this is a great example of how the surface of a red is very different to a blue. Those blues are much more manicured, much more smoother and you can see on this look, this red run, look at that, big old chunky gravel, big loose stones all in the surface. It's a lot rougher so it keeps you on your toes and it's something you're going to have to bear in mind when really riding down, looking ahead, checking things out. Right then, as you start to dissect the trails and take a look at sections, well line choice might start coming into a little bit more, much like it has here. I've just rolled up to this section and this is a definitive red section of trail here. You can see it's slightly steeper but it's also rougher with this rocky roll over the top. But the good thing is there is sort of this bluer, smoother line around it so you can choose the options. But it's well worth, this is sort of the kind of thing where it's well worth taking a look at before. But if you do stop and take a look, well, obviously keep your eye on uh, the trail or your ears open as well because you want to hear for other riders coming and try not to leave your bike or your bag lying around. But yeah, I think there's a good line. I think I can tackle this left line. So let's give that a go. Right, let's talk jumps on red trails then because this I think is where the biggest differences are. Now we've got a bit of a path gap, a little mini road gap if you like here. It's not the biggest, this is entirely rollable still because most features on reds are still rollable. But it's quite a distance to clear it all the way to here. You're going to have to go pretty quick into it, so it's going to take a bit of commitment. Now, not just commitment here, but actually it gets more technical after the landing as well. We've got quite a tight, a very loose right-hander. So, let's plop over it just to sort of see what it's like to begin with, and then we'll give it a beans and clear it as well. Ooh. Oh, that was a fairly steady run in that time. And it gives me that ability to get a feel for the jump and what it's like. I know that if I come up a bit short, it's safe. So I think now we can add a bit more speed because I've got a feel for the turn as well. We can try and clear the whole thing. Woo! I definitely gave it more beans on that one. I could tell that the braking was a bit tougher because I had to slow down more for that loose corner. I definitely had to pull up more to clear it. But you know what? It's still a really fun jump to learn on, proving that reds are actually a next good step up from a blue. Here's a jump similar to before, but again, another red feature is that you get these things more tightly packed together, more obstacles that you're gonna to have to overcome. So it's a similar size jump to the one I've just done, but if you look, we've got a tabletop straight after it. So that kind of thing on a red really makes you focus sort of on your concentration and setting up. So what I mean by setting up is, all right, you thought about doing this jump, you clear it, bish, bash, bosh, done. But you've got to then think about getting set up so you clear the next one properly. So it's just an extra bit of thought process that's required as well. Before you hit any trail, blue or red or black, depending on what you want to do, you've got to check your bike before you're hitting the trail because you don't want a bolt to come flying out or something like that happen whilst you're out there on the sticks. Now it's always good to check ABCs, so check your tyre pressures. Check all the bolts on your bike, and if you've got a full suspension bike, make sure you test out the suspension on your bike as well. But you can do the blue with any bike, hardtail, nice. budget bike, even up to your high-end full suspension bikes. Yep, that is absolutely right, Blake. But if you're gonna sort of advance onto the reds, well then that's where you need to think about maybe something that's a little bit more up to the task in hand because it does get a little bit rougher and a little bit tougher. So it can be more punishing on your bikes, that's for sure. But do you know what? You can still do it on hardtails. You can still do it on anything. So uh, yeah, it's just worth bearing in mind though. It's all down to your skill. Mm -hmm. Hopefully this video has helped you out to determine what trail is best to master and to become a better mountain biker because you know what i think blue is a good start if Red's you're getting a great into advancement. it red's a great advancement <laughs> and if you're feeling comfortable 
And then you start thinking about other trails, like a black trail. Yeah. But, but that's for another day. I know. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. It's been a pleasure, and we will catch you next time. Yeah.